Hi, I'm Will. I'm the facilitator for the Rolling Stones cohort, and I'm excited to introduce the faculty champion exercise to you here. We hope that this exercise will be a great way to think about who on campus can be a supporter of your program, particularly from the perspective of faculty who are either using OER or supportive of OER or both. So let's get started. So when we talk about your faculty champion, as I said, it's somebody from the faculty who can do some work championing open education and your open education program in particular. And I want to suggest that that championing can take a lot of different forms. A faculty champion is somebody who you can build a relationship with that you can then offer to campus decision makers as a proof of concept, right? Professor such and such did it and it worked great. They can also be a success story when you're talking to other faculty who are considering or interested in open education. And that can be somebody that you just mention in a conversation, a name that you drop, or you can set up a discussion with those different people. A faculty champion can also be somebody who works with you on campus and national advocacy. Uh, so when you go to that department meeting, maybe you bring them with you to have that conversation. When you do an informational panel, maybe you talk about them or have them in the room as well. And they can also be a national advocate for open education. One of the best decisions I made early in my own career working with OER is I brought my faculty champion to a conference with me, to the Open Ed conference with me in particular. And, and she was a rock star and she was amazing and, and it made a huge impression on people in the room and also an impression on her that's made her a great champion going forward. And that's really just the tip of the iceberg. There are many, many different reasons that you want to identify faculty who can act as champions on your behalf, who can say things with a voice you may not have, who can support you and your work in ways that you can't do by yourself, and, and that really can be a, a sort of a, a support system as well in those moments where you're frustrated or you feel like faculty don't get it. You can say, well, I, I know professor such and such gets it at least, right? So there are a lot of different reasons to develop and work with a faculty champion, or better than that, many faculty champions. So I'd like to share an example. Uh, the faculty champion that immediately comes to mind for me is Dr. Maria Gallardo Williams. Uh, Maria goes back to the first round of our alt textbook program back in 2012, 2013. Uh, Maria was one of the first folks who expressed interest in open education. And I asked her why she was interested. She said, I'm a chemistry teacher and my students love me. They hate my textbook. And so what I want to do is I want to find a different way to teach people to do chemistry experiments. Uh, and so we worked with Maria and with our digital and distance education folks to create what she calls her student made videos for chemistry labs. Um, and they were a huge success. If, if you've heard me speak about OER in the past, you've probably heard me tell Maria's story. Um, but but the, the cost reduction piece was there. The student agency piece was there. She was doing open pedagogy before we talked about open pedagogy, or at least before I was. Uh, and every step of the way, Maria has been beside me to talk up the program and talk up how awesome OER have been. Uh, she offered a great model early on for doing assessment in tandem with open education work. So she got a, a journal publication out of her initial OER grant with us. Uh, she's also the one that we took to the conference. So she, she was great to have in that room as well. Uh, and Maria has gone on to be hugely successful in a number of ways. I've got the tweet here announcing the fact that she won our Distinguished Undergraduate Professor Award. Um, that's not the only award she's won. She's, she's a big deal in certain circles uh, who think about teaching and learning on my campus. And so having her be in on open education from the ground floor was really, really important for us. And it's continued to pay dividends. When we tried our new open incubator program last year, she was there for that one as well and shared a really good perspective. Um, so she's really been an outstanding champion for open education, for open pedagogy, and for my library's work in open education in particular. So if, if I could wish one thing for everybody in, in the program right now, getting the certificate, having somebody like, like Maria is the thing I would wish for you. One of the reasons that relationship with Maria has been so good is not just that I, I spent some time thinking about what she could do for us and how she could make our OER work successful, uh, but we also have spent a lot of time thinking about what we can do for Maria and for people like her. And as you start to think about your own faculty champions, maybe it goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway, spend a lot of time thinking about how you can help them meet their goals and help them do what they need to do. Um, so, so 
Sometimes that's as simple as when you have a faculty member who's doing great OER work, doing a press release or featuring them on a website, just telling their story, that always feels good. It's sort of a win-win situation because you get to brag about your program and you get to brag about this great faculty member and you create a, a relationship in the minds of the readers as well. So that's tremendously useful. Um, if you can find a way to support them in awards, that can be really powerful. Maria won that teaching award I mentioned, mostly because she's an incredible teacher, but also because the libraries repeatedly, actively said nice things about her and wrote nice things about her and got in people's ear and said, like, Maria's awesome and you should recognize that awesomeness. Uh, so finding ways to to recognize their work informally through something like a press release and formally through something like an award can be a really important piece of that. The other piece of supporting your faculty and your faculty champions in particular is finding ways to understand their incentives and support them in that space. So with the example of Maria I gave a moment ago, uh, the fact she chose to do that assessment was, was really useful uh, because it's nice to know that OER is working, but it was also really useful because in a promotions and tenure package, sometimes teaching is valued, but not all the time, and talking about an open education grant, even if it's a very small financial award, can be useful because there are some faculty members for whom being able to say, I got a grant matters, even if it's a $200 grant from the libraries or whatever. Um, so that, that stuff can be useful, but helping faculty sort of spin the straw of open education work into the promotion and tenure gold of a conference presentation, a publication, an award, or whatever it is, can be really useful as well. I mentioned that for the faculty who are thinking about promotion and tenure, but wherever your faculty are, whatever their incentives are, understanding what's in it for them is going to be really critical in building and tending to that relationship. So that's sort of what a faculty champion is, why you would want to work with them, and what you can do to help them out. Let's talk now about finding and cultivating those relationships. As I said earlier, having one faculty champion is gold, is really, really powerful. But if you can have two, three, five, ten, twenty or more faculty champions, that's even better. So I, I would suggest that a lot of the early work that you do as you're building your open education program is to start to find and cultivate those relationships in different ways. So how do you do that, right? You, you may have existing relationships. You may, as soon as you saw the words faculty champion, have said, oh, of course, professor such and such. That's the obvious answer here. Um, but if, if that didn't spring immediately to mind, start to think about who you know on campus that is a good fit to be a faculty champion. That if, if that person is the head of faculty senate or a senior faculty member who, who carries a bunch of weight, that's awesome. But sometimes a, a young faculty member who doesn't have a lot of power in the organization but has a lot of enthusiasm and can just talk up a program can be useful, right? In fact, sometimes the best fit for a faculty champion is somebody who's on the come up who is going to be able to use the open education work to build their own career as well. And so you get a different kind of energy there. But so I always say start with relationships. If there's a faculty member you go out and have coffee with once a week, uh, if they're not involved with OER, have that conversation. And if they are involved in OER, that they're a great sort of first faculty champion to start writing cool things about and shining a spotlight on and supporting in all the ways that we've talked about. So start with your relationships. Once you've had those conversations or as you're having those conversations, think about your subject liaisons and, and start to have those conversations, both because your liaisons are a great resource in OER in general and because they can help you identify, like, who's talking about openness in your department? Who's really invested in teaching and learning? Uh, likewise, a faculty development or support center can be that resource. On my campus, we have teaching faculty who spend all of their time thinking about teaching and learning. Um, those are sort of another obvious place to find champions. Um, but think about who on your campus is already invested in at least a piece of that stuff and then how to sort of build and cultivate that relationship. And to make that more formal, we've developed a worksheet. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, you can see a link to it on the bottom of this slide. We may also share it with you directly, but you can certainly find it in this CERT materials folder. It's gonna be called Finding Your Faculty Champion, and it's gonna look something like this. And it asks you to think through these sort of four questions and then commit to an action. So the first question it asks is, what do you need? What are the characteristics of a champion? 
do you need an in into a particular department? For us, it's engineering. If we can find somebody who is in engineering and doing OER, that's a big deal because engineering really drives the bus on my campus. Uh, if you have a department like that, that might be really significant. It might be that you want somebody at a certain level or stage of their career. Uh, for a lot of folks, including uh, for me when I first started, the faculty th champion I needed was anybody who would talk to me, anybody who would return my phone calls or answer when I knocked on their door. Right. So think about where you are and, and what a sort of ideal positioning of or role of a faculty champion might be. Uh, spend a little time thinking about who you know. And we've talked about this a little bit already, but what connections do you have directly or indirectly? Who have you worked with? Who owes you a favor? Who have you heard talking up openness in one form or another? Uh, the faculty member who's interested in open access publishing or open data might be a really, really interesting fit because this is sort of open in a different way. Um, sort of starting to map out who do I know that I could sort of begin to cultivate? Maybe somebody who I know and hasn't thought about OER but could. Or maybe it's somebody who's doing OER in an informal way, and we can really talk about how awesome they are. So I need and I know are your first two questions. Uh, the third question is who can you ask about this? And again, this might be a subject specialist. This might be somebody in a faculty support team. It might also be I go out to, for coffee with this faculty member. OER isn't the right fit for them right now. But who do they know? Who do they talk to regularly in their department as well? So what's the network beyond people that you know directly that you can reach out to to identify and connect and start working with faculty champions? And then finally, as I've suggested, the most important question, what can you help with? Uh, some faculty will get on board and champion your work just because they think it's worthy in and of itself or just because they like you or, or something like that. But But your best champions are going to have a good answer to the question, why are you doing this? Why are you so excited about this project? And and if their answer is because it helped me be a better teacher or because I, on my evaluations every semester, students say thank you. And that shows up in that way. If they have an answer about how it serves them and their interest, they will be a more effective and maybe a more enthusiastic champion as well. And then the last thing we, we ask you to do is to sort of talk through some specific, concrete, actionable steps you're going to take. And this could be a bulleted list or it could be narrative. But once you have a sense of what your needs are and how you're going to make those connections, what are the specific steps you're going to take? I'm going to send an email to every subject liaison and I'm going to ask them to help me identify a faculty champion. Or I'm going to identify the, the 10 faculty members who teach the most expensive textbook in our bookstore. And I'm going to take them out to coffee and have a conversation about OER with them, right? Whatever your steps are starting to think about and articulate not just an intention to do something, but the specific plan of action, the specific steps. That's the last thing we're going to ask you to think about. Uh, and then once you've done that work and, and written that down, we, maybe you're going to actually start reaching out to those people and taking those steps. But even before that, we hope you'll share your ideas with your cohort. Uh, there's going to be some time where, we're, where each cohort is going to meet and sort of talk through these worksheets. So come prepared to share your ideas but also to hear ideas from other folks as well, because I'm sure you'll come up with some great things, and I bet you'll hear some other things in that conversation that you didn't think of as well. So that's the faculty champion exercise. We hope it's a useful tool for you, and we're excited to hear your ideas. Thanks so much.